Hello friends, welcome to this new session on mathematical logics. Logic is a discipline which deals with the method of reasoning. It helps us to identify whether the particular reasoning which we do or the argument which we make is going to be a valid one or not a valid one. Based upon it, we will be able to make further decisions. So, we will see what is going to be the base for these mathematical logic which will be termed by the statements called by the name proposition and the connectives which are used to build the propositions in this part 1 video. Come on, we will get started with. What is meant by proposition? A declarative statement which is going to take either the value to be true or false but not both. So a statement which is declarative in nature which takes the output as true or false but not both is called as proposition. So we say it has to either take the value true or false. So which will not fall under this category? So the sentence of the type which are exclamatory in nature which expresses surprise, strong emotion or pain cannot be termed to be propositions because they may be true for the time being and they may be false at a different point of time or if it is viewed from some other point of view. So exclamatory statements are not going to be proposition in nature. Interrogative sentences that is sentences of question type they can either again take the value to be true or false depending upon the situation. The next one is imperative statements. Statements that need immediate actions like orders or uh, cautions or something of it will be called as imperative sentences and they may also may not be true or true depending upon the condition in which is being analyzed for. So you will have to keep in mind the statement which can either take the value true or false but not both. So there must no be ambiguity is called as proposition. So keep in mind which doesn't form the proposition. Now we will check with the examples. New Delhi is the capital of city. Is this a valid proposition? The output of it will a have to be either a true or false if it is going to be a proposition. So is it true? Yes, the answer is going to be true. Therefore, I can say that this is a valid proposition. Wow, what a beauty, I say. The beauty lies in the beholder's eye. A beauty may be differing from person to person. So, it will not always take the value as true or not always take the value as false. So, this kind of quantity which is exclamatory in nature is not a valid proposition. 2 plus 2 is 3. We know that 2 plus 2 is 4. But this is given as 3. Which Is it true? No. This is going to take the value as false. So it has only one output which is generated and that is very clear output. It. So is this a valid proposition? Yes, this is a valid proposition. What time is it? It's a going to be an interrogative kind of question. So this will vary from time zone to time zone and doesn't take any particular value. And so this is not going to be a valid proposition. Leave him alone. It is an imperative statement which is an order that doesn't take a value true or false. And again this is not going to be a valid proposition. X plus Y equal to Z. This may seem to be okay but when will it turn out as true or when will it turn out as false? Only when the values of x, y and z are being declared. Until the values are being declared, until x, y, z have been declared, the value or the statement is not going to be valid proposition. So I suppose this now gives you an idea what is going to be a proposition and which is a valid proposition and not a valid one. Moving on. We say the truth value is going to be true 
and so the propositional value taken by it is denoted by capital T. If the proposition is going to be false, then the truth value it takes is denoted by the symbol capital F. Notice that normally we have a tendency of using zeros and ones in our logic, but universally since we are going to stick on to true and false for statements over here, it is better you take the idea of T and F and start working from now on. The propositions are usually represented by means of capital letters. So I say P is going to be the statement. What is going to be the proposition? You will come home. Okay. P let Q be the statement. Ram is studious and so on. So we make use of capital letters to denote the propositions. Next, propositions can be broadly classified into two types. One is called atomic proposition and the second one is called as compound proposition. What is atomic proposition? A proposition that consists of only one propositional variable or a constant is called as atomic proposition. When we combine two or more atomic propositions and form a new statement or new proposition out of it, then we refer it by the name compound proposition. So to form a compound proposition, we need something called as connectives. So what are connectives? The words and phrase used to form compound propositions are called connectives. There are basically five different connectives which we use in logics. The first one is negation denoted by an inverted L symbol or a tilde kind of symbol which may vary from author to author and denotes the logical operation of not. The next connective is conjunction denoted by a symbol called as which and it represents the logical and. The next one is disjunction which is denoted by the symbol V and is representing the logical or. The next one is going to be called as conditional which is denoted by a single added arrow and it represents the statement if then. So you take P if P then Q. So it is going to be called as a conditional statement. By conditional statement it is like a two way operator and it represents if and only if positions a p if and only if q so now we will look into the connectives in a very detailed manner first one is the negation if p is any proposition then the negation of p denoted by not of p is read as not p is the proposition whose truth value is false when p is true and true when p is false so when it is true negation p will be false and when it is false, negation P will be true. Consider the statement Paris is in France. So what will be the negation of it? It is not the case that Paris is in France. It is not the case is going to be the negation of the statement. Normally, we have the practice of writing it as Paris is not in France. Next, we will move on to execute them in some problems. Find the negation of the proposition. All students are intelligent. Now, how I can reframe this as? We can rewrite this negation of P as it is not the case that all the students are intelligent or I can say that some students are not intelligent or I can also state it by this way like there exists a student who is not intelligent. Directly stating that not all the students are intelligent is not going to work. It is just that some of them are not going to be intelligent. So keep this in mind. Find the negation of the proposition no student is intelligent. So how we can rewrite this as? You can rewrite this as some students are intelligent. We move on to the next connective which is conjunction. If P and Q are two propositions then the conjunction of P and Q is the compound statement denoted by P wedge Q and read as P and Q. So what is going to be the truth table? Your truth table will be true only for the case that if both the values of P and Q are true. In all the other remaining cases, it is going to be false. 
Now let us apply it some some example. Form the conjunction of P and Q in the following ways. P be the statement Rama Salthi. Q be the statement he has blue eyes. Then we read it as P conjunction Q is Rama Salthi and he has blue eyes. P be the statement it is cold. Q be it is raining. So we say P conjunction Q is it is cold and raining. Let P be the statement 5x plus 6 is 26 and Q be x greater than 3. So the conjunction is 5x plus 6 is 26 and x greater than 3. Moving on next, the disjunction which is going to represent the logical OR operator. It is denoted by the symbol P or Q and is read as P disjunction Q or P or Q. How about the truth table for this? If at least one of the value is going to be true, then the output is going to be true. In both the cases is going to be false. This is the only case where the statement turns out as false. So both true or at least one true then it is going to be OR operator which takes the value as true. Now come on let us explain it using some examples. Let P be the statement Arjun will go to Delhi and Q be the statement Arjun will go to Chennai. So the disjunction of it will be Arjun will go to Delhi or Chennai. You need not have to write Arjun will go to or will go to again over here. You can just club the word Delhi and Chennai and reframe the statement in a simple word. P be the statement it is cold. Q be it is raining. So what will be P disjunction Q? It is cold or raining. Moving on to the next one. Conditional proposition. P and Q be two proposition. Then the compound proposition if P then Q denoted by P conditional Q. You call it as conditional is called by the name conditional proposition or implication. The first part P is called as antecedent or hypothesis and the one that follows that is the Q is called as consequent or conclusion. So this is the antecedent part. This is the conclusion part or the consequent part which is going to be your Q. The truth value is going to be false only for the case that P is true and Q is false. So notice only for the case when P is true and Q is false, the output is false. For all the other remaining cases, it turns out as true. So let us frame some examples before moving. What is the alternative ways in which the same expression can be expressed as? You can call it as P implies Q. P only if Q, Q if P or Q when P, Q follows from P and P is sufficient for Q. So these are the ways of representing it. Now for example, let P be tomorrow is Sunday and Q be today is Sunday, Saturday. So what will be the conditional statement? If P then Q, if tomorrow is Sunday, then today is Saturday. Okay, so you will have to take care of if under then. So next one, it rains and Q, it, I will carry an umbrella. If it rains, then I will carry an umbrella is going to be the conditional statement of the given quantities. The last one being by conditional proposition. If P and Q are two proposition, the compound proposition P if and only if Q denoted by P by conditional Q is called as a biconditional proposition. So it is actually a combination of if P then Q and the second part which is going to be reversed in nature if Q then P. So if we combine both of them with then your uh, conjunction operator which is going to be this one then you get the output as your biconditional operator. And the truth table is such that when both the cal uh, quantities are going to be true then the output is true and also when both of them are false again the output is going to be true. So the output is true if both of them are true or if both of them are going to be false. In both the cases the output is going to be true. So let us wind up with an example like P be a number which is divisible by 6 and Q be the statement the number is divisible by both 2 and 3. What is going to be the biconditional statement of P and Q? We can read this as a number is divisible by 6 if and only if the number is divisible by 2 and 3. 
yes obviously if it is divisible by 6 then it is divisible by 2 and 3 and if it is divisible by 2 and 3 vice versa it is divisible by 6 so both the condition holds true over here so we have seen about what is proposition what are the types of proposition namely atomic and compound and to create a compound what are the required connectives namely negation conjunction disjunction conditional and biconditional hope this video has helped you to get an insight of the basics of the mathematical logic happy learning keep learning thank you